they have so much ore they literally cut the camera off. But now we're back. Well, we never left. <laughs> All right, bro, I don't know what's going on there, but yeah, the Yankees. I'm gonna come out and say I, I think they should beat the Royals, but if they don't, then I'll understand why. But to me, Yankees have Aaron Judge, Juan Soto, Jazz Chisholm, um, Anthony Rizzo, though I think he's out for this series. What's the other guy's name? There's a guy on their team that looks like most wanted. Ah. But I can't think of his name. He's their catcher, I believe. Or he might be their... Le Verdugo. Alex Verdugo or something like that. <laughs> no, I, I know more names on the Yankees than I do on the Royals. But the Royals have a nice player named Bobby Wood Jr. He's a shortstop. He's kind of nasty, so... They have a chance. Oh, and their catcher, Sal, Sal, Salvador Perez. Nasty. Okay. Yeah. okay. But I'm going Yankees. Royals. Royals, um, they beat the Orioles to advance to play the Yankees. So. Let's go over to the National League. We have... Bro, the sandwich is not that good, bro. <laughs> I wouldn't know that. I've never had a, a wing stop sandwich. Well, what we're talking about is wing stop, you know, so. Just, yeah. uh, who is it? It's um, the Mets and the Phillies. Now, the Mets just did some nasty shit last night. They played the Brewers in game three, winner takes all. And they were in the ninth inning, top of the ninth inning. They had, they already had an out, so they only had two outs left. They had two runners on base. The guy comes up, boom, home run. They take a 3-2 to lead. They end up scoring one more run, and they end up winning the series. Wow. In the top of the ninth. Shout out Pete Alonso. And also shout out Francisco Lindor. The only two players on that team I can tell you who they are. But... Um, the Mets, this is interesting. I believe this is true. They, they started off 0-5. Um, and they were just one of the worst teams in baseball. And then all of a sudden, like the second half of the season, they were the best team in baseball. That's Aura versus Aura right there. Okay, you didn't have to go. <laughs> you can go sit down, though. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you can definitely go sit down, dog. And you're my home. Oh. Okay, so we're going to interrupt this program to bring you a special. Uh, have you seen the Kai Sinat Little Bas little Basketball Association stuff? Yes, I have. You saw that? What are your thoughts on him playing fifth graders? Well, I believe he did get hurt. Well, he did get hurt. He did win a championship. Okay, let's cut to the chase. Enough of the like glazing. Would you beat Kai Sinat in basketball? Being fifth graders, yes. No, I'm saying not about the fifth graders. Fifth graders out of the pictures. By the way, some of the fifth graders were nasty. Which I don't think they were all fifth graders. <laughs> whatever grades you're in, whatever, whatever. There was some. There was two two on his team that were disgusting. I think it was number twelve and number two or something like that, bro. Keep keep at it for real. All of them keep at it because it's basketball. It's basketball is you know any sport really at that age. Would I beat Kai Sinat? Would you beat if if Kai Sinat you know one versus one one on one, you versus Kai Sinat? Are you beating him? Yes or no. I think you would beat him. Wait, wait. I think. How, I think. How how tall is he? Just to make he's sure. he's your height. I'm not sixty. Yeah, he's your height. He he can't dribble, so right away you should be able. To, you've been trying. You've been having to be. You've had to put up with me dribbling against you your entire life, sure. and you've made it. The guy can't dribble with his left hand. 
and he's like this the whole time. There were so many double easy. dribbles from him doing this and the ball going over his head. You're locking that up. I'm, I'm just being honest. You you can you can defend that. That should be easy. You can defend that. And even if he did get to the lay, uh, to the to the rim on you, he misses layups anyway. And you know he can't shoot no three. Oh, so it really, realistically, I have no problem with you guarding him. I just want to know: Do you think you could score on him? For sure. Who wins this one? Kai versus Flight. Come on, eh? But what I've seen of Flight. Come get this work, dog. He has been good, I don't lie. <laughs> but he has some things he needs to work on just dis disrespectfully. <laughs> Bro's just pushing. Disrespectfully. Bro's pushing 30. She's like, oh, he's got some things he needs to work on. Yeah, he needs to have a freaking family, bro. Um, nah, I'm joking, G. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking, Flight Brown. You're an inspiration to many people out there. Not me, but many people. Nah, I'm, just <laughs> <laughs> um, nah, I'm playing. I'm playing. I did a verse on one of your songs. I got like six views, so appreciate that, Big G. But um, <laughs> you remember the, you remember the verse I did on uh, Shake Some. Let me see your Shake Some. <laughs> um. Here's the thing, if Flight can work on those Flight things he needs to work Man, on. Man, Flight ain't working on nothing but the ganja. Um, you don't know what ganja is, do you? No. I'm not explaining it, and you should be proud that a 15-year-old has no idea what ganja is. Okay. W, w protection, bro. Um, <laughs> Kai, I have to say Flight on this one. I agree, and I think that would be an insane video to watch, Flight versus Kai. Now the question is, you versus Flight. I'm not even kidding, bro. What do you think? Uh, to be fair, he could beat you because he's really taller than you. Well, that ain't got nothing to do with it. I'm playing against you, you're taller than me. Yeah, but he's taller than me by like half, That's uh, half, not, half a foot. Height doesn't bother me. Height doesn't bother you. Huh? Height doesn't bother me. Well, but you see, like, he shoots, and then he just runs to the ball, and when he misses, and he's going to miss every single time. So his his thing is going to break and then get an offensive rebound and then get a layup. And he'll miss, like, six layups. <laughs> to me, height doesn't really matter to me. And he'll randomly make a three. And then he'll holler, Irish, green, green, green. Um... But you could definitely, you could beat him. To I don't, well, to be fair, I don't know. I mean, could you score on him? You think you could score on him? Possibly. Possibly. All right, well, here's a good question for you. Flight and Kai on a team versus just me. If it was just you and Kai, I don't think... He would win anyway. But if it's you and the fight and Kai, I don't, I don't It's me versus them. They're on the same team. It's two versus one. Like how you and John versus me that time. Oh, 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 that, was, that was a good video there. But, um, <laughs> um, I would do the same thing, by the way. Um, does height really bother you? Yeah. Yeah, it's the worst thing I've ever been. Um. Okay, let me rephrase the question because obviously you're you're thinking way too much into it. No, not obviously, <laughs> I'm going to beat them eleven to zero. True. Sure. Here's the question: How long does it take? Two minutes, five minutes, seven minutes. How about three or four minutes? Three or four minutes. Okay. Three or That's four it. minutes. I respect that. Three or four minutes. Flight and, Flight and Kai versus me. One versus two basketball. I'll make them look like fifth graders, cuz. <laughs> Alright, what's the next topic? 
Okay, well, this isn't really a topic. This is just kind of something I wanted to kind of speak on. So, uh, one, of <laughs> <laughs> one of my favorite uh, games as a JIT uh, was Backyard Baseball. Oh, we're talking about games now? I'm just talking about this game in particular. Then you talk about that one. <laughs> because you, this was way before your time. Okay, I And... I recently, probably like months ago, uh, downloaded it on my computer and I started playing it and stuff. It's super nostalgic, whatever. And then out of the blue, on some random day, bro, out of nowhere, there's an announcement from somebody or something or whatever it is, <laughs> Backyard Sports is coming back. It's just revitalized, rejuvenated. And today's October 4th, October 10th, the game is coming out on Steam. The very classic game is re-releasing on Steam. So I'm definitely pumped. And hopefully they'll come out with other um, like uh, sports again. But uh, I'm super pumped for backyard baseball. Shout out Pablo Sanchez. The GOAT, the undisputed GOAT of Backyard Sports. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited for that. Look at Rob Dillingham, NBA rookie right here. I'm excited to see what NBA got in store for him. Nice ball handler. That's okay. And they keep missing. All right, brother, relax. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to uh, point that out. Um, and to be fair, it kind of, kind of has something to do with. Uh, we had a series on our t um, Joe Two Real called Backyard Basketball, um, which we made a competitive um, mini basketball game series <laughs> against each other. Yeah. Um, and we did do a video in. What's in here? Mm -hmm, somewhere. Yeah, yeah. That that's not backyard basketball. That was more indoor because we went to go outside. <laughs> we did that on this uh, the night of Misfits Four. And we did do a outside video with Pongs, which was I don't remember which one that mm. was, but that wasn't that was really like part of backyard basketball. Ago. That was just a video that was that we four did years before. ago. Yeah. No, but the backyard bas basketball series. Um, we did four. We had started a fifth one. Uh, we did uh, interviews and all sorts of stuff for the fifth one. And then we just never did the fifth one. Well, here's my question. And y'all and probably have this question too. When will we come back with that? Exactly. Well, here's the thing. Uh, all that stuff that we did, four or five, is gone. All the interviews, well, I think it's gone anyway. More than likely it's gone. So if we do come back with it, now we're gonna do it again. I don't know. I think I think if if we did it, it would just be straight up just the backyard basketball. We would keep the little press conference crap out of it, and we would just go straight to the backyard basketball. And I think realistically, it would just drop one day out of nowhere. I'm not gonna just be like, yo. Backyard basketball soon. Nah, bro. Nah, we going to cook in silence. And then it's just going to pop up on the timeline one day. That Backyard Basketball 5 is back. Possibly. Possibly. Because I'm low-key kind of cooked right now. I'm 25. I got a beery belly. <laughs> like, it'd be like Santa Claus out there hooping, bro. But I still cook you any day. So, it could. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Whatever. Me and him never. What's the word? We're not there and touched a basketball since then. You're but. not comp. You're not competitive. What do you mean you haven't touched a basketball? You were literally. On oh a, yeah, I have. You've been on a basketball team since then. I have, but then that was that was that was. Tragic. Yeah. <laughs> that was fun to go through. Yeah, I would cook you. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how long it's been since I touched the basketball. 
Um, So the other topic is uh, another series that probably that we started on. That we started. I'm, if I'm gonna be honest, it's probably not coming back. No. <laughs> uh, Jab Madness. I, I just I to don't, be I don't I don't yeah. I'm not punching you in the face, bro. <laughs> I I can't, bro. I just can't punch this kid in the face. Yes, well, I'm actually dead ass scared that if I punched you. Like, there's stuff with you. I don't know how your ears and shit work. I'm not, like, that's some nerd-ass shit that I have no idea. So I don't know how, how like, the, the stuff works. But I feel like I would punch you and your fucking, like, head explodes or some shit, bro. <laughs> like, well, <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, and let, let's uh, make this known, like, so Chaz, she has cochlear implants. Yes. Now, what that means, I'll let her explain because I'm not smart enough to tell you what it means other than that they are used for her to hear. Because without them, she cannot hear. But it's really cool because she's literally Bluetooth, so like you could connect to her ear. Is that correct? Somewhat. Well, um, I will ask one question before you explain it on the Bluetooth aspect of it. So, like, say... Your school laptop or like a computer in general that has Bluetooth connection. Yes. Could you legitimately connect your ears to the to the thing, and then whatever like watch a YouTube video or something, and it comes straight to your ear. Yes. And it won't play out loud. Nobody would be able to hear anything. That's fucking sick. So um. That's a cheat code, bro. All the nights you like well, no pretending one... to be to sleep so your parents don't know. Well, here's the here's the thing. When there's like storms or like lightning or whatever thunder, whatever you hear. Yeah, you don't hear lightning, man. When I take these off physically, mm. I don't hear a single thing. So could you demonstrate? Demonstrate right now. Like I'll, I'll start speaking and you wouldn't be able to hear me. But the thing is, I have a smarter way, more of a cheat code too. When I take these off, I can read your mouth. Right, but let's pretend you don't read my mouth. So you're gonna so look at the camera. Face, okay. Look at the camera, and I'm gonna say something to you. Ready? So legitimately, right now she cannot hear me. Can you hear me? <laughs> She's like, it makes it seem like we're bullshitting, but we're not. She has no idea what I just said. So basically, I'm gonna say right now, I'm a gr I'm the greatest basketball player of all time. So you can put it back on. Do you agree with what I just said? No. <laughs> well, that kind of fucks it. Do you know what I just said? No, because I, <laughs> I didn't even... She knew I was going to be on some bullshit. She's like, I'm not agreeing to anything you just said. I said I'm the greatest basketball player of all time. <laughs> now she's thinking about me. She's... But no. Uh... Yeah, so I've always said that's a cheat code, right? Because, like, I mean, it's not. Let's be honest. It's a, you know. If it was up to you, you'd probably want to hear like everybody else, right? Sometimes I get tired of hearing people half the time. Because... You get tired of hearing people? Well, you got a cheat code. Here's, just... here's, here's the thing. When I'm in class and there's like teachers that talk way too much, I just, I mean, I get aggravated, so. You get aggravated. I think that's everybody. <laughs> I don't know if that's but, like, I'm pretty sure every student is like, I hate this teacher talking right now. Have those every been classes you want to fall asleep in? Of course. We, there's been classes I have fell asleep in. You're talking to the wrong guy here, bro. But when, uh, my first day of school, <laughs> first day of school. Hold up. Just, just in case there's any teachers from her school watching, this is uh, possibly not true, but go ahead. Well, first, first. She's a great day, student. <laughs> first day of high school. Well, bro, it's crazy. You're in high school, bro. Um, and these teachers better not be watching this. You don't have to say which teacher, obviously. You just say well, a teacher. One teacher. One teacher. Yeah. They were doing like orientate. Like they were like showing me what not to do and the the handbook. What not to do? Like the handbook, basically the study handbook. Okay. I fell asleep in that class. Well, that's actually funny started, because, ironically, that's probably one of the things you should not do. 
<laughs> that's actually crazy. I fell asleep in that class because I got bored hearing. <laughs> She's just but like using you as a, as a, an example. Okay, students, you see this stupid student right here that just fell asleep in the class? <laughs> this is one of the things you do not do. Everybody um, give her a wet willy right now. Um, you ever got a wet willy? Don't know what that is. <laughs> Does that even like, I don't know if that even would work with a wet willy. So what a wet willy is is somebody would like lick their finger oh, and stick might. it in your ear. Ew. But to be fair, like that's nasty. I don't know how that works. But I'm gonna be completely honest. I don't know how her ears and hearing and well, stuff works. But one of the kids that might be watching this are in school, right? And you have to go over the student uh, handbook, student handbook. Is this student every friend? year? It's the same thing you learned. Would you get, wouldn't you get tired of looking at the same or hearing the same things from your past previous years of school? I, I mean, it's been so long since I've been in school. I just, um, I don't miss school whatsoever. I don't, I don't miss school whatsoever. Do you um, miss any of the teachers you had? Uh, and you don't I don't even, games, I'm going to be but... completely honest. I don't even remember like most of the teachers. I will say Mr. Thomas, shout out Mr. T. Uh, that was a really fun teacher. Uh, he doesn't teach at your school? He used to, he used to. Um, he used to teach at both of the schools that I went to. Uh, so I met him originally at your school and then when I transferred, he was also teaching at that school, which was really cool to me, so. Um, and you know, I would hope, to, I would like, to, you know, I would like to hope to think that I'm also one of his favorite students. So, you know, shout out to Mr. Thomas, legend, legend, legend. Um, uh, um, but as far as high school, man, you know, I'm gonna be completely honest with you. When I got to high school, obviously, I was in your school. Um, what do you mean by in my school, early college? There we go. I, I wouldn't say if that. If y'all don't know Let's that. Let's not say that out loud. Oh, yeah. It's in, it's a, it's a high school slash college type thing. Yeah. But let's not get into all that. Um, I would say... So I was in like a normal... It's a, it's a, I would say it's a private school because you have to be accepted to go to that school. Pretty much. So she's a private school ass kid right here. <laughs> but no, like, uh, so obviously I went to public school for basically all eight years mm -hmm. or nine years before high school. Uh, and I had, I mean, I went, I went one location and then went to a different location and came back to that location um, for middle school. And I had like a group of friends right through, throughout middle school that I was tight with. And then... They all went on to regular public high school, and I went to a, the private high school. So I never really saw them no more. Actually, that's not true. I saw them outside because we were tight, so we would hang out outside of school. But I had a group. I had to go from like a, a group of friends that I knew to seeing an entire different group of people that I'd never seen because this Same private thing. school had students from the other town too, true. which is not normally the case with a public school. You have a certain uh, span, right? So like half of the town goes to one side and half of the town goes to the other side. Well, let me so you kind of know this. both, let me just but say this. when they include other parts of the county, you're not sure, so. I had the same problem. Right um, now? In middle school, I was about people that I knew from past, if like elementary school. Growing up, yep. Um, I don't see them often. Right, because they're probably at the private, I mean the public school. Yes. Yeah. Um, I had to, but, well, there was a couple of students that used to go to my public school, is in my school. Yeah, that's how it is. So you, you'll, okay. you'll, a couple students will follow you again, because they pick a few from every different school around the county, I believe. But it's just weird to go. And I think because it's what it is, you get older students too. Especially, you're obviously you're a freshman, so everybody's pretty much older than you. Well, that's not true, age-wise, but grade-wise. Mostly everybody that you'll encounter is... Well, the thing is, the school is very small. Because we're in, like, you know... Well, I don't even remember if you knew, but... The building that we're in was used to be the 6th grade building. 
and they train well the yeah. see when I students were in the hallway in the middle school, but then they, then they changed yeah. it because it wasn't big enough for the other students. So now we had to go to the Cisco building and took over that building. Um, it's basically a small school to me. Yeah, so when I went 10 years ago, uh, the little building that's like in the fence, that mm -hmm. little building there, that was what we had. And then we had a couple college rooms in the college. That's it. We didn't have it. We did not use the middle school at all. We used them trailers that's outside the middle school. Then where do I get? But again, this was 10 years ago. And to be fair, I don't know how, at the time, it, it felt to me like the school was still pretty new at that time. I don't know when the, the first year that they started, mm -hmm. but yeah. I'm pretty sure I, I was still early in that school's lifespan. So I'm very sure that a lot of the stuff has changed since I, I went. But yeah, no, like... Um, Topic yeah, because I have no idea where where we started. Where did? Oh, we... it was more my ears thing. Right, the ears. Yeah, cheat code. So again, uh, so the woman you... did it. He couldn't see, or I couldn't hear. So we kind of had disadvantages. What the the jab madness? Right, right. That's where it originally stemmed from. Yeah. So obviously, without my glasses, I'm I'm screwed. I can see you right here, but I can't really see like right over there that's blurry so but uh, yeah well, the, the idea was a lot cooler than what it actually ended up being <laughs> yeah uh so yeah and we'll just we'll, we'll bench that one that uh, would be gone so but the um backward basketball possibly we just yeah there's find we'll, time to do it it's not even that, it's just... It's really crazy to me that basically from the age of like 11 to like 22, basketball was literally the only thing I ever like cared about. So... It came a point where like I was getting... I was getting old to where like... I had to start doing other stuff, otherwise, like, I was just, <laughs> yeah, I have to live life, you know? Like, I have to make a living um, so I can get this house and all this stuff. Um, so, it t to me, it felt like I had to kind of put that to the, to, to the past, like, I had to leave basketball behind. Um, which is weird, right? Because I would be honest, like growing up, um, of course you have friends and stuff, but, um, and you'll learn as you get a little bit older, like friends come and go, uh, people, people come and go, you know, but for me, it was like basketball was always the one thing that didn't come and go. It was always there. So no matter what was going on in life, obviously, you know, when I was like your age, a little bit younger, the stuff that I was dealing with when I was going to that school, mm -hmm. as far as like that and all that stuff. So, you know, growing up, uh, if you lose a parent and your, your other parents are busting their ass to try to take care of everything they got to take care of. So you don't really have, you don't have no guardianship. And again, you have friends and stuff, but it's like, you know, Glad thing, I'm glad we turned that on. <laughs> that would have been a snooze fest. <laughs> Which, honestly, this is a snooze fest. But no, like, um, you go through that stuff, and it's like, no matter how you felt that day, you could be angry at the world, you could be angry at yourself, you could be angry at other people, um, you could feel whatever emotions you feel, but, like, I would just put that shit to the side, grab a pair of headphones, grab a basketball, and no matter what court I was on, whether it was at my own, at a gym, at a park, at a church, it didn't matter where where I was at, I could just forget all about that and just focus on 
shooting the basketball. And that helped me so much. And then it was just like for a long time, it was like, I have to let that shit go so I can grow a little bit as a human. So, so now I have to dive back into that, which again, I put the 10,000 hours in. There's no debate in that. So even, it's just a matter of when I decide to do it, I'll, I'll still be just as good. It's not, it's not up for debate there, but. Um, I do want to touch on this real quick while we still kind of talking about the hearing and stuff. So, and I guess you're kind of too young. You would have been too young, really. But, like, do you ever remember a time when, like, you actually heard without the... Okay, so me and my mom and my dad, we well, had a conversation about this. When we went to my thing, we had a conversation about that, mm. and he asked me that question if I ever remembered anything. Yeah. Okay. I was too young to know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, you were. I was like in kindergarten. You were five, right? When around that time. When you just um, knew that you couldn't hear. I didn't know. My mom didn't know either until I believe. She said about how we Yeah. Um, so I'll also put in some some stuff here. I think at the time there were kind of signs, right? And I think um you were having trouble with like speech. Yes, I did have to go to that. Well, I think be I think that has uh, I think it kinda of goes hand in hand, right? Because if you can't hear properly words, if you can't hear yeah, words properly, I mean... you're gonna pronounce them however you think they're supposed to be pronounced rather than like how you hear it. So you can't hear it. How are you going to pronounce it? So I think that had a lot to do with the speech stuff. Well, here's my thing. If I didn't have these healing, hearing abilities, yeah, I would have to learn sign language. Well, do you not know sign language? No. Ah. Well, in my school, we did a little thing where we had to learn different sign languages ways and like letters and sentences and all that stuff. I didn't understand it. But I do want to learn it because I feel like there's probably some people in the world. Yeah, oh yeah. Some people in the world that probably have gone what I'm going through. I would like to know, do you know anybody? Have you met anybody with the same thing? When I went to this place, there was one girl that had oh, really? the things. Um, she was telling me when, how long she how long she had him and everything. Was she like around your age or was she older? She was, she was older. Oh, okay. She had him for the rest of like her whole entire lifetime. So. Oh, so she was a grown woman? Yeah. Okay. And to me, it was nice to see different people that like... And the Ooh. thing is, I wouldn't mind going out and helping people. Yeah. Um, that's one thing. That's my thing. That's like your goal in life. Is to help other people. Yes. Um, That's so awesome. And actually teach different people, basically. Um, and all y'all are just basically. That's basically where it touches to. If y'all know what that is. Um, it deals with hearing things. Well, basically going through an audiogram, basically. It shows you different... Um, it shows you lines. And it's more like a graph, basically. And it shows like different numbers. It, it could go up or it could be down. Um, there's more to it, but I'm going to touch on that when probably sometime. Um, yeah, that's my goal. Um, when I go to college and everything, I will find. Um, We'll say classes or degrees mm. to get that. Um, but I went there, when I went to the thing. This is going to be a lot of school. I can do it. Yeah, I mean, honestly, if it's something that you want to do, school, just do it. Like, I, the reason, if I'm going to be honest, the reason I stopped going to school is because when I went, I went to uh, community college. And I was just taking like general classes. It wasn't like, it didn't feel like it was leading me to something or to somewhere. And 
to me it's been it's been, it's very weird, right? Especially like I don't know if it has anything to do with you know being an adolescent with a single parent or not having a dad there to help guide me, but at that age when you graduate high school, to me it seems really weird to expect someone to know what they want to do with their life. You know, and I think a lot of people will go to college between, you know, 18, 22 years old, and you'll go thinking you're going to do one thing. And by the time you get even halfway through college, you don't even want to do that no more. Or you've got something else that you'd rather do. Or I know something happens. Like, it's really weird to me that it's, it, it, and it's weird in high school too, because it feels like the teachers are also like, kind of like, you need to know what you want to do. But it's like, it's weird to me to expect 18 year olds. And obviously, you know, when I'm your age or whatever, and you're probably thinking this like now, like 18 year olds to you probably feel like, oh, that's a, that's a legitimate adult. You're like, oh, when I'm turned 18, I'm gonna be an adult. Like, no. it, doesn't, it doesn't happen like that. You don't just go from, oh, you're 17 to now like, oh, you're 18, you're officially an adult. No. In some ways it does, right? Cause obviously if you commit a crime, and then yeah, you're an adult, you're going to fucking jail. <laughs> but like you don't just like it doesn't there's nothing in your head that just clicks overnight like, oh, I'm eighteen now, so I'm an adult, I know what I want to do with the rest of my life, all this shit. Mm -hmm. Like it just does not happen. So and there's it's interesting to me, like the way that technology has come. Because like years ago, that those didn't exist. Mm -hmm. So it would have been weird. It would have been crazy how like that would have came about. So I'm going to tell you a story here. And again, this is not something that I was even alive for. But my great-grandma, so your granny's granny, uh, she was hard of hearing. She was like, she wasn't like deaf, but she was really hard of hearing. Thank you for She was hard of hearing, right? And she was kind of like you where she like, she would just have to read lips really. But she would also have this like sixth sense. Maybe you have it like eh, when like, you might, well, I guess you didn't because you got the cochlears that help you hear. She didn't have, obviously, they, were, they weren't around then, so she, she didn't have that. But it was always like they could be talking and if they like just happened to be talking about her, she just had this sixth sense like, you're talking about me, aren't you? <laughs> but, uh, it would have been like, I, I don't know that for sure, like if it was something that she was diagnosed with, or, but maybe, maybe that's something that maybe got genetically passed down to you. Maybe she was hard of hearing, and then obviously um, there was Granny Madge, then there was Madge, then there was obviously your mom, and you. It could have maybe got somehow passed down. It could. Or maybe, I mean, I mean, obviously, we'll never know, but... Or the thing is, like, well... Yeah, I, I think it's, it's great. I will say one more thing. I'll ask one more question about it. Um, I was on the passenger line. So, do you remember, like, going and getting that first surgery? No. No. All I remember... Sit in the bed and then have something on and like you. That's that's all I really know. Um, was it an instant change? Like, oh, I couldn't hear before, but now, like, I have this thing so I can hear a little bit now. Well, I did have hearing aids. Um, oh, before you had this, you had hearing aids? Yes. Okay. They didn't really, I mean, they changed the, these a little are a lot bit, better. <laughs> but then when I have. When I had these, it was like massive change. So you don't remember this first surgery at all? Like you don't, not necessarily the surgery itself, but do you remember like, oh, I'm going to have surgery? No. Not really? So that was going to be my question. Like, were you scared? Like, but um, you're like, I don't have a fucking clue, so. The thing is, I'm not scared about surgery. It's just like, the show is natty pretty much. That's <laughs> the show Grey's no, Anatomy. No, that's just, a, that's no. your mom talking right there. No, let me just... No, no let me just... <laughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Oh. Um, Shout out Pablo Prigio anyway. When I saw that show, people were getting surgeries. And... 
Some people don't last through those. Yeah, because it's not real. <laughs> well, 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 what? Well, those are also, like, very... I'm, I've never seen it, so I'm not going to speak on it, but I'm pretty sure, like, they probably cut people's hearts open and shit, so... It's a little bit more difficult, I well, would say. Well, the thing is, that could possibly happen in the world, but that kind of... Oh, it can. My, my Aunt Shelly, and also shout out to Aunt Shelly. Um, she's had heart surgeries and stuff, so... She's a strong lady, super warrior, so... My Aunt Shelly, Virginia... She's had heart surgery before. Oh. Well, they've had to go in and risk really risky stuff, and she's went to. I mean, they set her up with some really high high level doctors. When did she have it done? When she's, Ooh. When she better have it done? I think it was right after I turned eighteen, but I'm not sure if it's if it's been just the once or if she's had multiple. But I know for sure she had one. I think uh, 2017 ish. But I, I want to say she might have even had stuff before that. I'm not too sure, but she's a she's a warrior, bro. My aunt Shelley for sure. When I think of like a oh. super strong woman, that's what I think of for sure. Well, here's the thing. And I wish I, I was a as I got older, I had surgery again on my left. I honestly didn't really care, but then I got scared okay. a little bit. Um. It must be absolute fear of saying it as like an older age. Yeah, you had a conscience. <laughs> um, you knew, like you had a conscience. You were aware. The thing is, I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't sleep on my left ear, and that's when my normal ear I normally sleep on half the time. Hmm. They had a little cut on my ear, basically. Oh my god! And if they, um, if I went on that. It would hurt. Yeah, I would imagine. And then it would uh, bleed, bleed a oh, lot. Well, I do have some scars from these ears. Oh really? Lots of the ears. Um, oh my god, I forgot about him being the coach. Say that. Um, yeah, that's pretty much. When I was younger, I didn't really care because I did understand yeah, yeah. anything. But then as I got older, I was like, I did get scared a little bit because when I first actually thought, like, I believe I was 13, 14 when this happened. This was so about two years ago. Yeah. Um, I was actually finally like realizing like what this happened. I did get scared when they took me, but then they had a um, special cup as as things. Um, then I wake up. Then I wake up, and I'm like, wow. and surgery's done. It's like, <laughs> yeah, um, it is pretty amazing. There was kind of I wouldn't say there was that there were things I wasn't able to eat. It was just I had to mm. easily, like, oh, like the night before and stuff. Yeah. The night before, well, I got that wrong. I thought I wasn't supposed to eat around 7 o'clock that night. It was supposed to be 7 o'clock in the morning. And, and I didn't realize uh, that until... So you're starved to death? like. Just like <laughs> um, when I got there, I couldn't eat at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't eat a single thing because if I did that, then yeah. it would go. Yeah, it's just certain stuff that... The thing is, when I see red... Things like, well, like blood. Yeah. Oh, so you're like, it you don't scares, like blood and shit. It scares me. Damn, that's not good for undead apocalypse. Well, <laughs> <laughs> obviously, undead apocalypse would not be real blood. Hopefully. Um. Although I am the type of person that if I start bleeding, I'll just film it for a scene. <laughs> to me, it scares me because when I see people bleed, it just, just makes me gag, and it just does it. Well, here's a question for you. You know, like, um, if you start bleeding in somewhere in your body, you know how, like, you can get that taste in your mouth that tastes like blood? You ever feel that? No. You ever had, you've never had that? No. Wow. So, like, if I start bleeding somewhere in my body, I could, like, tell that I'm bleeding without, like, say if I can't see where I'm bleeding, I get this, like, taste in my mouth, like, metallic taste that I'm like, oh, I'm bleeding somewhere. I never had that problem. I don't Never had that problem. 
Well, I got three things here while we're still on this topic. As, as you say, while we're still on the topic. Uh, <laughs> one is, uh, I'm, I guess it's kind of, I've had a surgery, obviously. I don't know if you remember the surgery that I had. Um, I was 17, and I had the appendectomy. Where they had to cut, they had to cut into me here and come through and take that appendix out. And they used this like little camera and they cut open my body and put the camera inside my body and like navigated with the camera to the place where they needed to go and then got the thing out and so me stitched me back up and stuff. Obviously I they gave me like crazy drugs, put me to sleep, it was insane. It was over before I even knew it happened and I was back playing back. They said, don't do anything for two to four weeks. And two days later, I'm dropping motherfuckers off on the basketball court. That's how I know I'm fucking raw. But anyways. <laughs> um, in moccasins, mind you. I think were you able to eat during that time? Well, I didn't really want to. <laughs> uh, everything I ate, I would throw up because of the appendectomy. But um, after... It was kind of light food for a while. Mm -hmm. Again, it's really near your stomach and stuff, so just be careful about what you're doing. But you really, with the stitches and stuff, I couldn't really stand all the way straight up. I had to kind of like, and the craziest thing was this all happened the like the week of final exams for school. So I got lucky where I could go in, take the exam, and go straight home. <laughs> Most people, you have to wait for everybody to finish the exams and all that stuff. Not me, bro. They said, as soon as you're done, walk to the nurse's office, and we'll get you out of here, okay? Uh, so, two, um, I would just like to get your thoughts on this. Um, do you, I want to make a um, opinion here. I think... Say, let's just say, like, for shits and giggles, that this was going to happen to you anyway, mm -hmm. the whole hearing stuff. I would say maybe you kind of got, maybe you're luckier that it happened while you were so young, so that, like, again, you weren't really scared, you didn't really know what was going on, versus, like, say, like, if it was me right now, I'm 25 years old, and if I just woke up tomorrow and couldn't hear shit, I'm shitting the fucking, I'm shitting my drawers, bro. Like, I'm like, fuck, what do I do? Like, holy shit. What do you think? Do you think, like, uh, like, I guess it's hard for you to form an opinion on that, right? Because it just happened when it happened, and it is what it is. Right? So the thing is, I can't really say anything in that. Um, if it happened at an older age, it would it would mess up. I think it's But shit. as a kid, I'll say it would be the best time to have that problem or any kind of problem. Um, because you have no, you won't have any clue. Like then you won't have to. Well, I wouldn't say worry, but you wouldn't have to like. And I'll add on to this. You broke your arm when you were like what three or four. Think so. So you remember that, right? But it's not like something like, oh, like, I I do remember that time. I, I, I do remember that. I will tell the itsy bits parts that I remember. Yeah. I remember. I think it was the day when I had to go to school, I believe. If I'm not mistaken. Um, not school school, though. Like, uh, what's it, it called? Was, you were in preschool, pre right? I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... I so I remember what had happened. Yeah. Um. Uh, it was time for me to go to bed, and I was basically playing on the bed, just having fun. Yep. Um. Then I kept dropping and jumping and jumping. Yeah. Then I felt on my arm, and my mom was washing dishes. Obviously, my mom was washing dishes every day, and she was in the kitchen. I don't remember anything else. All I remember was I was on the um, ambulance and I was on hospital. That's all I remember. 
Damn. And I didn't cast him off. See, I remember. That's all I remember. So I wasn't in the room, obviously. Um, I was there somewhere. Uh, <laughs> somewhere. I, was probably, I was probably in my room. So I believe I was like 13 or I was 13 at the time, I think. I think you were like three. I was moving the ink. I think you were three. I was in middle school, so you had to be three. And I remember I remember a situation. Yeah, uh, situation. Obviously, you had to go on the ambulance and stuff like that. And I think I ended up going to my dad's house. Yes, because you were Oh, I could have, but I think I just genuinely wanted to see my dad. <laughs> um, good call, all right? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, um, he lived right up the road. I could walk if I wanted to, which I did walk sometimes to his house. Um, and yeah, I just remember hearing that you had broke your arm. I, again, I, don't, I wasn't present. I didn't hear it. I didn't, he didn't see physically. it. physically... I wasn't around it. Yeah. Um, uh, but um, again, something that you experience as a kid that sort of you you kind of can't really superly overreact to, right? Because when you're a kid, right? When you're, especially when you're that young, a lot of a lot. It's 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 taunting you. It's like Why yeah. Is it's like yeah. Um, not but I, I think, I, right, think I, I think um, when you're real tiny and young like that, um, and you get seriously hurt, a lot of the times it's the parent's reaction yes. that allows you to react, right? So if I'm screwing around and I get hurt, a lot of times you'll see the young kids when they get hurt look up. And they look at their parent, right? And they want to see that reaction from their parent. If the parent looks concerned or worried, then they start looking around. Then they're like, oh, sh I'm hurt. But if they're hurt and then they look and the parents is like, oh, are you good? They're like, hey, you're right, I'm good. So, obviously. The thing is, I remember I, I wasn't able to fall. No, yeah, you won't. You, if you broke it, you won't. Again, a broken arm is it's definitely cause for concern, right? Well, the thing is, if you actually, like, say like numbness. What I'm saying, what, what I'm saying is that at age, I mean, obviously any age, a broken arm is a concern, right? Mm -hmm. But at your age, at three, whatever, you're not knowing. Oh, I broke.